Next, we're going to take a look at the vertebral column and the vertebrae. The vertebral column has several curvatures. We have the cervical curvature at the top, consisting of the seven cervical vertebrae. Then the thoracic curvature is next, consisting of the 12 thoracic vertebrae. Then you have the lumbar curvature, consisting of the five lumbar vertebrae. And most inferior is the pelvic curvature, which is formed from the sacrum and the coccyx. The sacrum is formed from five fused sacral vertebrae, and the coccyx is formed from three to five fused coccygeal vertebrae. These four curvatures are of two types, primary and secondary. Primary curvature means that you're born with it. The secondary curvature develops after you're born. The cervical curvature is secondary. It develops in response to a baby starting to raise its head and, and uh, gaining stability with holding its head upright. The thoracic curve is primary. You're born with that. The lumbar curve is secondary develop it as you start crawling, sitting up, and ultimately walking. And the pelvic curve is primary, you're born with that. Now we'll take a look at uh, individual vertebrae, uh, starting with just the general features of a typical vertebra, and then uh, specific features that allow one to differentiate between the different types of vertebrae. This is a lumbar vertebra. We're going to use it because it's the largest to have a look at the general features of vertebrae. This is the body of the vertebra. And this area through here is generally speaking called the arch. The arch is connected to the body by the pedicles. So the pedicles are here and here. These regions are called the lamina here and here. And the lamina fuse to form this process called the spinous process. This opening is the vertebral foramen, which is the passageway for the spinal cord. Vertebrae have seven processes. These are the transverse processes. The spinous process mentioned a moment ago. There are two superior articulating processes and two inferior articulating processes. The superior and inferior articulating processes are the processes that the vertebrae use to articulate with each other. Let's attempt to have a look at that. Here I've attached two vertebrae with a rubber band, uh, just holding them together. Now these are thoracic vertebrae, that's why they look a little different from the one we were looking at a moment ago. Before we look at the articulation between the vertebrae, let's make sure that we have our bearings. So this is the uh, vertebral body. These are transverse processes here and here. Superior articulating processes here and here. This is the spinous process. That's the vertebral foramen. And if we have a look at it like this, you can see how the inferior articulating process of the overlying vertebra articulates with the superior articulating process of the underlying vertebra. So if this is T8, for example, and this is T9, we have the inferior articulating processes of T8 articulating with the superior articulating processes of T9. These are synovial joints. There's uh, articular cartilage or hyaline cartilage between those articulating surfaces. Something else that we can see by placing the two vertebrae together like this is uh, the, the opening uh, known as the intervertebral foramen. Now remember this, this opening just stick the pencil in there. That's the vertebral foramen, and the spinal cord is running through that. Well, you have spinal nerves coming off of the spinal cord. 
And so in this case, the spinal nerves are represented by this pink pipe cleaner. So they, uh, they exit uh, via the intervertebral foramen.